Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video, I'm going to check a new micro quadcopter from Gepper C, the Phoenix 2.5. In this video, I'm going to go over its features, show you how to set it up, and then head outdoors and test it out. The Phoenix is available in two versions, so you can either get a bind and fly version, which comes with an FRSky XM Plus receiver, or you can get a plug and play version, which doesn't come with any receiver, so you will need to provide your own one. The price difference is $20, which is more than the price of the FRSky XM Plus receiver, However, it comes already pre-installed inside the quadcopter, so it saves you some time and trouble. Inside the box, you can find this short instructions manual. You can access the full one online, and I'm going to put a link to it in the description box down below. Since this is the Bind and Fly version, we also got the instructions manual for the Sky XM Plus receiver. We're getting also some stickers, then the quadcopter. Two sets of Gemfan Flash 2540 propellers. These are probably the best 2.5 inch propellers and I highly recommend them. On the bottom we can find some accessories including this OSD control board for the Ranka Micro Swift camera, a spare linear antenna with an IPX connector, two Velcro battery straps which in my opinion are not so great and I'm not going to use them. If you haven't done so already I highly recommend to try this battery strap from RJX. I've used it for a couple of months and I'm really impressed with its quality. We're getting these two plastic straws that are going to protect the antennas of the receiver, a bag with screws that are going to hold the propellers, some wires, and finally a bag with three anti-skid battery stickers and also these two rubber ends that are going to be placed on top of the antenna protectors. So this is the Phoenix 2.5. First of all, I can tell you that the build quality looks pretty impressive. On the center we can find the Gepper C Stable Only One stack. I've actually reviewed it separately and also featured it on the build video. However, this is the 20 ampere version and this one is the 12 ampere version. So on the bottom we can find a 4-in-1 12 ampere EC that supports up to D-Shot 600. Then on the center an Omnibus F4 flight controller that comes pre-flashed with Betaflight 3.2.5. And finally on the top a VTX with a selectable auto strength of 25. 100 and 200 milliwatt. I can tell you that this is a new version because this version didn't feature smart audio and I've already tested it and this VTX supports smart audio so changing the output strength and also selecting the frequency is much easier. Since this is the Bind and Fly version I've got also the FRSky XM Plus on top. Unfortunately it doesn't support RSSI and I really think that Gepper C should have included an FRSky RXSI receiver which is in my opinion a little bit better and since the price difference is $20 I think that it might be a better option if you don't mind installing your own receiver to save the $20 and get an FRSky RXSI receiver separately. On the front we can find a Runcam Micro Swift camera which is well protected by these two aluminum side plates. As far as I can tell you this cage is very good and is going to protect the camera lens pretty well. As for motors this quadcopter is using the Gepro C Speed X 1106 4500 kV motors. So these are relatively low kV motors which are going to enable you to use 4S batteries with this quadcopter. On the back we can find an XT30 connector for the battery and attached to it we can find a 330 microfarad capacitor. Now as you can see I attached the propellers and also used these protectors for the antennas. I recommend to use just one throw, cut it in the middle and keep the other one as a spare. The weight of the quadcopter is 92.3 grams and in terms of dimensions the thickness of the bottom plate is 3 millimeters, the thickness of the top plate is 2 millimeters. And the thickness of the side plates that are protecting the camera is about 2.8 millimeters. It's made out of aluminum and as I mentioned before it looks very durable. In addition the distance between motor to motor is about 125 millimeters and the distance between the front motors to the back ones is about 9 centimeters. The distance between the back two motors is 9 centimeters as well. So this quadcopter is using a true X frame. So after this short introduction, the next thing I'm going to do is to go over beta flight configuration and then head outdoors and test it with 2S, 3S and 4S type of batteries. I hope you will enjoy the rest of this video and I'll see you in a bit in order to give you my conclusion.
So overall, I can tell you that in my opinion, the Gepro C Phoenix 2.5 is the best 2.5 inch racer that you can get at the moment. There are other alternatives, for example, the X120, which costs significantly less. However, the experience that you're going to get with the Phoenix is going to be better than the experience that you're going to get with the X120. And it flies great out of the box. The only issue that I had is that the voltage scale wasn't set correctly. So as I've shown you before on the settings, you need to set it to 115. And that's the reason I couldn't fully test the batteries because the battery voltage that was shown on the OSD was lower than the actual one. In addition, I also crashed it a few times. The only damage that, that I had is that I bent one of the propellers and also I lost one of the antenna protectors. And as far as I can tell, this is a very durable quadcopter. In terms of flight time, I couldn't really test it because I had issues with the voltage scale, but I can estimate that you can get about four minutes of flight time using a 4S 450mAh LiPo battery. And of course, it depends on your flight characteristics. If you're going to go full throttle all the time, it's going to probably get you only one minute of flight time. And if you're just going to cruise around, you can get about four minutes of flight time. The micro HD action camera that I used on the last flight footage was the Firefly action camera. I used it both with 2S and 4S LiPo batteries, and it didn't perform great with 2S, so I recommend that if you are considering using a micro HD action camera, you should use a 4S LiPo battery. Now, even after mounting the Firefly camera and using 4S batteries, the motor stayed pretty cool. The only downside of this quadcopter is that you're not going to get RSSI from the FR Sky XM Plus receiver unless you're going to update its firmware. And as I mentioned earlier in the video, I think it's going to be a better choice to buy the plug and fly version and get a separate FR Sky RSSI receiver and install it yourself. I think that it's important to get the RSSI feedback, which is also going to help you to find the quadcopter in case it's going to get lost, of course, when the battery is still connected. I didn't mention it, but you're also getting a small buzzer, so this is important. So if you're going to lose it on the grass, this small buzzer will help you to find the quadcopter. And the second downside is that this camera is a little bit outdated. So if you think about an upgrade, I suggest getting another camera. The Micro Swift is a good camera, but it's a little bit old and there are better cameras in the market. As always, I thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions about the Gepro C Phoenix 2.5, feel free to ask it in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos and goodbye.